everybody, and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe, narrated by Disney, or Kuhn Lucasfilm, whichever way you slice it, Legends. Today I have for you, uh, I think, unless I've done these already, in which I apologize, um, a children's book, uh, a, a short Star Wars Tales, which I would usually say bleh, but this time it's actually pretty good. Um, and a full-on novel for you guys, the title of this video, A Cloak of Deception Review, uh, by James Lucino. So hope you're all ready for that. But before we get into the uh, novel, we have Star Wars Tales, issue number three, or is it issue number thir three or thirteen? Uh, I think it's thirteen. Deal with the Devil, by John Ostrander. That's right. You know it can't be a bad Star Wars Tales because you have John Ostrander being in charge of it. So what is this little short comic about? Well, it's about a Devorian, you know, those Satan-looking guys, named Vili. I have never seen Vili before. Uh, he might have been in the intro comics, I don't remember. But what is clear to me is that Billy is most likely going to be a character moving forward. I think specifically with Quinlan Voss. But we get to see Billy here for the first time. He's a funny, fun sort of guy. I enjoyed his little escapade in this short. And that's about it. Up next, if you're reading chronologically, you have Droids Everywhere. A children's book. What is... Droids everywhere about. From the way the little children's book is, it's like a lot of children's books that I remember seeing when I was little, where it's kind of showing you like Tatooine, showing you some of the characters, showing you a lot of droids. Um, but the way the story is told, this is really not necessary. You don't need this children's book. But it seems as if Watto is having some sort of commercial for his goods, right? Like, uh, like he got to put it on the hollow net and it's there for people to watch. A little short ad by Watto showing all the wonderful droids that you can buy at his shop and uh, showing him the, uh, the slave boy he has, which is probably... I mean, that's the only way I could really make that fit into a story is that it's commercial that Watto, you know, paid for and had up there. The only thing that, you know, wouldn't really fit that is that he shows Anakin, talks about who Anakin is, when if you're trying to make it commercial, you wouldn't do that. But everything else kind of fits, you know, like he's showing all of his droids. He even says, like, you can buy this here, ba ba da ba da It's a very small thing. It's for children, you know, just showing them some droids, allowing them to, you know, get their reading comprehension up, you know, help them learn with that. Um, but it's nothing special, obviously. You don't need this children's book. I did, of course, not pay for that because, good God, you have to be somebody like Matt Wilkins to do that. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's okay. I, I got, like, a PDF of it. Not a PDF. I got, because it's a whole, like, you know, picture book. So, it, it's fine. But if you're gonna read it, it would be about here. So that's about it. Now we get into Cloak of Deception by James Lucino. What is the overall point of this book? Um, overall, in a really, really short summary, this story is a big explanation as for how the politics-wise and whatnot um, that's a pillow, by the way. I apologize. Forgot to move that out of the shot. How the Trade Federation is able to have the basically army battle droid level of power that they have by the time of Episode 1. There's this terrorist organization, terrorists. They don't like the Trade Federation. They're attacking the Trade Federation. And all that sparks stuff in politics that makes it so... Uh, Palpatine can use this to give the Trade Federation more power. 
use the terrorists as an excuse for the Trade Federation to need more protection. And so they can get their army. And then we have the events of episode one. Um, we also have a lot of other stuff in here. This is probably the novel if you want um, a bit more of a character into Chancellor Valorum. If you want like a, a big story that gives you the most insight into his character, this is probably it. This is where you get to know the most about Chancellor Valorum. And it's very clear that he is a good man trying to help the Republic as best he can. But he's not the smartest tool in the shed. He's a smart guy. He's not the smartest. And he has two Sith Lords pitted against him and a whole bunch of just normal political adversaries in the courts trying to make sure he's undermined in his authority so that way people have less and less faith in him. And by the time of episode one, that is it. That's the final straw. He's out of there. Um, we get a little bit of Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan in this book. It's, of course, not as much character development as Jedi Apprentice because the series does not focus on them. But we still get a lot of good moments with Qui-Gon and the Jedi Council really showing the difference between uh, Qui-Gon and the, the Jedi of that time, which is really cool. Um, and we even get introduced to this new character, Cole. Um... And I, I rather enjoyed his story for the most part, uh, being an original character for this book. You know, Star Wars, you know, it's kind of like in the special features of the Spider-Man movies. Sam Raimi mentions, you know, like you have the character Spider-Man and you already kind of have the uh, investment by people just from the name alone. And, you know, the, the goal of the film is you want to try to earn that, that, earn that admiration. That's just freely given. In the same sense, when you're writing a tie-in book, a tie-in, you know, comic, whatever, that involves characters that already exist in a popular franchise like Star Wars, you know, really all you have to do is put their name on the page and that will grab attention. So the goal of an author should be to, you know, make them be consistent with the characters you see on screen and yet still make it interesting. But then also, if you're going to make new characters... To be able to make them, you know, interesting, despite the fact that they're not a movie character, you know, takes, you know, a lot of good talent, which, of course, James Lucino has. He's probably my top three writers for the Expanded Universe. So, for sure, pretty good read. There's a lot of stuff under the surface, too. You know, we got some more stuff with Sidious and Gunray. We got stuff with Palpatine and the Senators. We got stuff with... Um, the Jedi Council, trying to figure things out and whatnot. We also get to see a few cameos in this book, which really made me smile, but I won't talk about that till spoilers. But overall, this was an absolutely fantastic read. Though I can say again, like I did with my Dune review, I don't think this will be for everyone. There is action in this book, for sure. But this is a very political heavy, like a political thriller. You... If you don't enjoy a lot of talking, you're not going to enjoy this book. Because while there is action, there is a lot, a lot of talking. There's a lot of political talk. There's a lot of da da da. A lot of stuff being discussed in here, which if you're really into the prequels, uh, or if you're really into the politics of the prequels, you're really going to get into it. But if you're not someone who really cared about that, if that wasn't your favorite aspect to the prequels, or not something you really enjoyed, this might be a slog for you. Um, but I think with the EU, uh, cameos with, um, the overall genuinely good story that they're trying to tell and just everything about it, I think it's, it's one of the best novels of the prequel era. I mean, I haven't read all the Clone Wars stuff, but I, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, I'm sure Maul Lockdown's going to be a lot of fun because it's like a very action oriented book. I know practically nothing about Shadowhunter, but I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, overall, I think it was a good time and well worth a read, so you should go check it out. I'm going to get into spoilers in a second, so when I get back from this cut, if you don't want spoilers, now is the time to go. Okay. Three, two, one. All right, final warning. If you don't want spoilers, if you want to read this book, now it's time to go. If you don't care about spoilers, we're going in. I don't have too much to say here, but it begins with uh, this guy named Captain Cole, who is seemingly against the Trade Federation, and he starts with this 
whole attack on a, a trade federation vessel. Um, we also get to learn a bit about the Neomodians in this book. Like, we actually get to learn a bit about their home planet, their way of life. Not much, but it was still very nice to see. Um, Palps talks to Valorum about the Trade Federation being granted more power, because, again, he wants to get the Trade Federation to the place they're at by the time of Episode 1. Hell yes, Jedi Apprentice. Jedi Apprentice gets a mention here. It's not big, but it talks about how Obi-Wan was originally supposed to go to the Agricultural Corpse or whatever. And again, that's the beauty. That's the absolute beauty of the expanded universe. You have, you spend all this time invested reading stories. And it's justified later because it will get referenced back and forth. Here you go. You don't get that as much as in New Canon. I'm not saying you can't like New Canon it's fine if you do, but it's, it's just not the same. It's not, it will never be the same. You know, having all these references, making me be like, I spent hours upon hours upon weeks reading Jedi Apprentice, and it's validated by being referenced in other material, not being retconned or anything. So that was very, very cool. Speaking of references, in this book, we get introduced, he's only in it for like a paragraph, but we get introduced to Joros Sabaoth. For those of you who have not read the Thrawn trilogy, there is an evil clone of Joros Sabaoth in the Thrawn trilogy. Also an upcoming novel that we will be reading when we get to it. Joros Sabaoth will be a character in the book Outbound Flight by Timothy Zahn, which is a prequel to those books. So that's very cool. Um, we also get to see um, Tarkin in this book. We get a bit more of Tarkin, which is very, very cool. Because Tarkin, you know, he's the big guy in Episode 4 that even Vader listens to. So getting to actually learn more about his character is really interesting. I think the next time we'll get a big section of him actually being in it is, I think, maybe Rogue Planet. I'm not sure. But regardless, I'm so interested to learn more about Tarkin and how, how he was early on. We also... I can't believe it. She's not a big part of it, but she's in it. And it made me so happy. Verge. Verge from New Jedi Order, who might appear again in Rogue Planet. I don't know. I haven't read it. At the very least, her actions will be mentioned. And Jason's teacher of NJO, New Jedi Order. Verge is in this book, which I just found awesome. She's in quite a bit of it. She doesn't talk very much, but we get to see her helping out the Jedi and everything. So very, very cool. Absolutely love that. Uh, but yeah, so we learned some stuff about Havoc. Havoc's like trying to, you know, undermine the Trade Federation and everything. And Wants to kill Chancellor Valorum, which actually wasn't a part of Palpatine's plan, so Palpatine was a bit upset about that um, and everything. And it gets stopped, of course, but it still gets Palpatine what he wants and by granting the Trade Federation more power. People now have less faith and trust in Valorum. And by the end of it, Padme the Queen of Naboo, now recently elected Queen of Naboo, and um, Panaka, now being the head of security, are now in charge. So we're really getting close to setting the stage for episode one, even though we're still a year away from those events. But it's very, very, very cool that everything's kind of lynching, lynching, lynch, oh my goodness, I, I, snin, in, what the fudge do you call it? Like, I didn't mean to say lynching. Coming together, I guess. Whatever. I, I had a word for it. I lost it. Um, and ends with um, Sidious proposing a blockade. Of course, that won't happen for another year, but still. It's all very, very, very cool stuff. Uh, again, the spoilers weren't super long, but for some of that stuff, I really didn't want people to know about because I knew about Sabiath because I'd listened to 
uh, Matt Wilkins' video a little while ago. I compl He might have said Roger in the video, but I completely forgot. Maybe it was because I hadn't actually read NGO yet, so the name just escaped me. But, oh my gosh, like, you don't want that spoiled for you. You want to go into that not knowing that those people are in this book because it's so fun when you realize who they are if you've read those stories already. So I was definitely, definitely excited about that. But yeah, definitely a series, uh, a book well, well, well worth your time. Until next time, guys, may the force be with you.